The Gay Agenda. I know you know what I'm talking about when I do it with the spooky voice and the gay agenda thing. You know who and what I am addressing, I'm pretty sure. And if you don't, there's an entire group of people out there, not too big, but big enough to make headlines, where they believe that this, you know, the gay movement, right? Or really what it is, you know, people of alternate sexual preferences seeking equal treatment, is actually a cover for some secret clandestine agenda that is to make everyone gay? That's really what I understand this to be from them, having had discussions with these people on the internet and forums and whatnot. The whole thing they're saying here is that the gay agenda's real purpose is to indoctrinate children through the school system, which has been liberalized, and it create a gay society, which then they believe really is either the work of the Antichrist or the devil, or some sinister plot to destroy humanity through lack of breeding. And first off, I want to note that I know where this is born from, for the most part. But it's either the religious aspect of people who read their religion to say that gay is bad, and that equation is simple, you know, gay equals devil, or whatever. Or it comes from simply the fear of the unknown and the different, where people look at something that they can't simply understand, like if you're straight, and you look at something, or, you know, some material that's gay, or a person that's gay, and it freaks you out because you don't get it, and it's weird to you. And that's where this comes from, I'm pretty sure. And you know what, I understand that. Things that really violate your comfort zone are weird. And unless you take steps to understand it, it becomes this frightening unknown shadow based on what you don't know about it. Thus, it becomes whatever you think it is in the worst possible way. But, you know, knowing that, it doesn't excuse the, quite honestly, idiotic leaps of logic that go on here to create this gay agenda conspiracy theory. Because, one, the Gay people are generally pushing for the idea that you're born with it. It's not a choice. It's not something you can just make someone become or choose to become. They're going with this idea that it's something you're born with. Just like you're born straight, you're born gay, that sort of thing. So unless they're going from this weird angle that admittedly doesn't work at all, which is that, oh, well, we're going to tell kids that they were always gay. They just thought they were straight with their hormonal desires for women and not men. That doesn't work. It... it falls apart. It, this, that part of the theory really is based on the counter-argument's assertion that being gay is a choice. Thus, the gay people must want to make everyone make the choice. It entirely misrepresents the other side's beliefs, for one. And two, it misrepresents emerging science, which suggests, and more than proves it, at least in the case of fruit flies, that sexual preference is genetically determined. This is when you have a study where they can basically light switch it on and off, being gay and straight and fruit flies. There is something to that, and yes, humans are not fruit flies. Genetics are different, and the roles they play are probably different. But that tells us that at the very least, genetics plays some big role in this whole equation that is sexual preference. So, with that in mind, the first tenet of their idea of the gay agenda which is to make children gay, really falls apart both in logic and the beliefs of the people they're saying that they want this. Now, the other thing is that whole conspiracy idea to destroy the world or society or something with lack of breeding or whatever. Well, yes, gay people do not produce children. This is known because, well, obvious reasons. Biology and all. But they can have in vitro fertilization for lesbian couples, gay couples, you know, male couples can adopt. And honestly, this is a good thing. This is not a bad thing, having couples that aren't breeding but are fully willing to take in children that don't have a home. Because of their biology, they're forced to be adopting parents. And I think we should be fully taking advantage of this possibility as a society where we have children in orphanages and families who want children. Oh, but wait, they'll turn them gay. Let's revisit that point again because there's a little sub-niche in this whole argument, which is that gay couples, lesbian couples, they can't adopt because they'll turn the child gay. Well, I already addressed that, I think, previously, but let's talk about that specifically. Because a loving couple, which, if they want to adopt kids and they're not, you know, bad people, right? They're trying to adopt kids to have a family. I think they're going to want to take care of their family. This is just part of instinct and gay or straight, whatever you are, we all are built with a level of basic instinctual parental understanding. 
We want to care for children. This is universal. In every species that exists, pretty much, there is a desire to care for offspring, and we're no different. And gay people are no different. Lesbians are no different. No one is different on this, except on a personal level. There are some people who don't have that. But that's purely on an individual level. It's not a group-wide thing for anyone. But, you know, on this point about turning kids gay in the household, right? Well, we know that every straight household produces only straight children, right? So, there aren't any gay people. This actually didn't happen. There aren't any gay people, right? That's what that logic says. Because, quite honestly, if that level of influence on someone's sexual preference were possible, we wouldn't have homes with a homophobic authority figure churning out gay children. That wouldn't happen. If what they were saying is possible. That's the thing. You wouldn't have that happening because every or most gay couples would produce gay children. Straight children should come from straight homes almost exclusively then. But this isn't the case, and there are many studies that show this not being the case. It, it doesn't even make sense, as I noted before when I talked about this. It just falls apart on every level, this idea that you can just turn somebody gay or straight. Well, here's a challenge for you. Be gay if you're straight. Yeah, be gay. Try it. Just spend five minutes of your day, right? Just five minutes and try to be gay. Just do it. Like, you know, it's a choice, right? If you're on this side of believing it's a choice, then not only can you choose to be straight, you can choose to be gay. Well, that's what you're saying, right? So, prove it. If you can sit there and say, well, I was suddenly gay because I wanted to be gay and my hormones realigned themselves in my brain to change my sexual attraction based purely on my will, then we can have a discussion on that. But I think most of us can realize that that is not going to happen, that your hormones really do not care what you want them to do. If they say you're attracted to a dude and you're a dude, well, you can hate that, you can love it, whatever, but that's what your hormones are telling you, and no amount of wishing is going to change that. But let's talk about another point that must be made with any conspiracy theory. Who benefits? Who would benefit from the gay agenda achieving their nefarious objective, huh? Who benefits from society being destroyed by lack of breeding because everybody's having a gay party? Aliens? Like, is this an alien plot to make Earth habitable for them once we're gone from the gay? Or is this God's plan to test us with the gay? I don't get where the actor is, the supreme person who directs the gay agenda or has anything to gain from these nefarious plots. That's the thing. Oh, but all gay people are in on this plan, right? I mean, they all meet at their secret evil mountaintop with a perpetually stormy sky, right, that's dark, and they meet at the Gay Agenda house, where they all direct the Gay Agenda plans all together in lock and step, right, where they're all marching together under the same orders from some unknown and probably insane, because there's no gain, person, or being, or figure, or something, right? So, when we explore the idea of a gay conspiracy, it's nonsense. We can see it. This is patently nonsense. Crab people. Crab people. <laughs> <laughs> and not only does it just fall apart, that general cloud of the gay agenda, it just falls apart, but more than that, it's motivated by fear. And this is obviously so. And, quite honestly, no good decision comes from fear. No good social policy or agenda comes from fear. No civilization-wide idea or ideas that deal with people should be made from the grounds of fear. They should be made with understanding. Because if you understand them, the worst that happens is if you truly view them as a threat still, even after understanding them, you know how to fight them better. But more than likely, the case will be if you stop and understand the people that you claim are evil and out to get you, you'll find there's nothing to fight in the first place. Well, you'll find that really you have paranoia based on fear and that these are just normal people with a slightly different sexual preference, and that's it. That's all that becomes, really. It, in the end, is just a sexual preference, something that almost in its entirety is personal someone's own business, and it has no effect on you, has no effect on me, anyone, but what they themselves do, unless they hurt somebody, and we already have laws for that. So, rather than build up this idea of the gay agenda and bring up all of this craziness, which really, if you're anti-gay or whatever, that nonsense just makes you sound bigoted. That's all it does. 
And if you really want to have a conversation on this topic, don't do that. Actually bring up real information. And I don't know what real information you could have to be anti-gay, but once again, if you have real information, we can at least talk about it, right? But don't make up conspiracy theory nonsense to try to justify your hatred, because all it does is it shows your hatred for what it is. Fear and bigotry. Just something to think about.